Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So hello friends, uh, welcome back. So in this uh, uh, lecture, I will just go over all the topics uh, uh, or just the, the name of the topics that we have uh, covered in this uh, 12, year, uh, 12 uh, uh, week uh, long course. And uh, so um, this course was on uh, combustion in air breathing aero engines. Okay. And of course, you know uh, combustion in air breathing aero engines is a complicated phenomena by now. Okay. But it has got several aspects to it. It has got the design aspects where you have to think about designing a combustor that can power a gas turbine engine or it can power a scramjet or a ramjet engine. And but those design aspects are intricately coupled to the fundamental processes that happens in the combustor. Okay. So, to design a combustor which is working, which is successful, which is efficient, one needs to know the fundamental combustion processes very, very well. So, that is why we have gone into the this, this whole course essentially could be split up into three parts. The first part we would have discussed fundamental combustion processes. Okay. So, if you remember, so here we have the modules, we have the topics in this, the first column is the, is the number of, the serial number of the lectures, second column is the module it covered third column is the topic it covered and fourth column is the concepts that we covered. Okay. So, in this uh, module chemical thermodynamics and kinetics which was about, about five lectures, we first of course gave the introduction about the importance of liquid uh, of combustion in air breathing aero engines and it is how it is coupled to the high energy density of the liquid hydrocarbons. Then in chemical equilibrium we went into the topics of classical thermodynamics maximization of entropy principle, Gibbs free energy, we talked about chemical equilibrium, the equilibrium constants uh, Kp, Kc if you remember. Okay. And then we looked into different things like heat of formation and uh, we uh, discussed what is uh, sensible heat, what is heat of reaction and combustion. We also discussed the concepts of uh, uh, sensible enthalpy and uh, enthalpy of formation. Okay. Uh, so, those things are very important uh, uh, whereas the total enthalpy is the sum of the sensible enthalpy and the enthalpy of formation. We discussed heat of reaction and combustion and we said how we can estimate heat of reaction from the equilibrium constant and then how we defined how could we could estimate adaptive flame temperature for a closed vessel um, uh, which does not uh, interact with the surroundings uh, through energy transfer. Okay, uh, where uh, and we showed that how adaptive flame temperature concept essentially emerges from the concept of the conservation of energy. Okay. So, then we looked into chemical kinetics, okay. uh, we looked into law of mass action uh, which is the uh, founding uh, pillar of uh, chemical kinetics, we looked into reverse reactions, we need to look into net reactions and um, uh, we looked into uh, this uh, multiple reactions, uh, how to handle multiple reactions, the quasi steady state and the partial equilibrium uh, approximations. Uh, we looked into reaction order molecularity, we looked into Arrhenius law activation energy and collision theory. Okay. Then um, uh, we looked into this uh, uh, the concepts of activation energy which comes in the Arrhenius law where we said that that, um, uh, that uh, your um, uh, which was uh, like the your uh, k is equal to e, e to the power b times t to the power of alpha times e to the power of minus activation energy by rt. Okay. And then the whole reaction rate becomes essentially this k the reaction rate constants times the product of the uh, of the concentration of the um, reactants raised to the stoichiometric exponents. So, all these we discussed. We discussed uh, how we can estimate this reaction rate constant uh, by a rudimentary idea called collision theory uh, which does not take into account uh, the, uh, the energy states of the, um, of the electron cloud surrounding the molecules. And as a result, we looked into this more advanced transition state theory whereby in invoking these two step uh, reactions for me formation of an activated complex, we could uh, form a better uh, description of the reaction rate constant. 
We looked into unimolecular reactions, straight chain reaction, hydrogen halogen systems, branch chain reactions. This was very important where we showed that uh, under what conditions a system can uh, lead to very rapid uh, combustion uh, 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 that is um, when these branching reactions can dominate and it can produce more and more chain carriers uh, then uh, and what are the criteria for that. And we also looked into the flame inhibitors and uh, experimental techniques to measure the different reaction rate constants, reaction rate constants. Then we looked into oxidation mechanisms of fuels, practical fuels we define what is ignition delay, uh, we looked into branch chain reactions, the hydrogen oxygen oxygen systems Z curve, we looked into the competition between termination and the branching reactions um, which could uh, which defined one of the limits, uh, we looked into oxidation of carbon monoxide and the role of initiation reaction, we looked into methane oxidation. Ignition of uh, light hydrocarbons and the phenomena that it entails like cool flames and negative temperature coefficients, how the bond uh, breaks uh, in different um, hydrocarbons, uh, beta scission rule, uh, formation of NOx, uh, Zeldovich mechanism, prompt NOx uh, 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 etc. those things um, that we discussed, uh, the concepts of uh, soot and PA formation in a very uh, little bit uh, tangential manner. Uh, in a very quick manner we discussed, also we discussed very uh, few aspects of the mechanism reduction. So then uh, with this we were equipped with chemical thermodynamics and kinetics okay, in this part. Next we looked into uh, transport phenomena and governing equations, we looked into different forms of transport, uh, molecular, uh, momentum transport, heat transfer as well as um, uh, species transfer and the associated diffusion coefficients and derivations okay, and how you can use the kinetic theory to discuss. Then we looked into the governing equations, uh, we showed uh, that the all fundamental uh, uh, like conservation laws which are used to describe systems are essentially written for systems. So then for systems uh, how we can translate those laws for uh, closed systems to open systems like the flowing systems which are of interest for um, engine type of configurations. And that was done by the Reynolds transport theorem, um, uh, so that led to this um, uh, control volume formation and the Reynolds transport theorem. Uh, then we looked into different uh, constitutive relations, uh, that is after you derive the governing equations for control volumes, mm, your job does not end because there are several other equations and relations that needs to be supplied to basically um, mm, uh, to close the system of equations. We looked into diffusion velocities and auxiliary relations and isobaric assumption. And we looked into simplified dis dis diffusion control systems and energy equations. And then we derived the energy equation um, uh, in an enthalpy form, uh, we derived the species transport equations uh, and uh, we derived the we incorporated the different ways by which we could simplify these uh, reaction systems, simplify these governing equations by invoking the distinct diffusivity and uh, uh, the, the distinct specific heat and diffusivity formulations okay and this led to simplified equations and uh, to uh, but then after this uh, we we'll arrived at the simplified equations uh, we realized that this uh, nonlinear reaction rate term creates a very big problem so we tried to uh, derive conserved scalar equations uh, formulation by which we could uh, uh, derive a system of equations which uh, describes the conserved scalar where there is no such um, uh, right hand side source or sink term but of course the we realized that this could not be avoided so in one equation you have to solve for the reaction rate because you know combustion system of course that is the what uh, is the most important okay. And then we looked into the derivation of coupling functions, local coupling function formulation, then we moved into non premix flame, we looked into the structure of a 1D chambered flame which is an uh, which can be considered as an unit or the most fundamental of non premix flames by using concepts of coupling functions. Uh, so we reviewed the chambered flame and the coupling functions and invoked the reaction sheet approximation and its properties. Uh, then we looked into condensed fuel vaporization because uh, as we know that uh, all these engines use liquid fuels, so it is important to understand how these liquid fuels can evaporate and uh, then mix and then, then react because in uh, air breathing aero engines the reactions invariably happens in gas phase. So it is imperative to know what is the mechanics and what is the heat transfer thermodynamics behind this uh, liquid fuel evaporation and burning. So we looked into the d square law of droplet uh, vaporization also. Okay. Then we moved into laminar premix flames, 
where we looked into the first hull, we looked into the thermodynamics of laminar premix flames, this rankin hugoni relation, we find out the difference between deflagration and detonation and um, uh, what are the, how does the properties before and after change for these kinds of different waves, uh, deflagration and detonation waves. Then we looked into the structure of standard 1D flames, okay. We invoked the scaling analysis and we found out the burning flux and uh, as, as a function of pressure and we uh, found out that how burning flux is uh, one of the most important properties properties of the that def defines the laminar premix flame and what does it depend on. Then we looked into analysis and governing equations, we uh, looked into the cold boundary difficulty uh, which happens when you want to solve for a 1D premix flame in a doubly infinite domain. Then to define, uh, to arrive at this, uh, at this uh, things, uh, at this uh, burning flux analytically we invoked, uh, we, uh, we took up this uh, zeldovich frank kamenetsky analysis and then we looked into the laminar flame speed, the diff different types of flame speed dependence, how we can extract global parameters from uh, overall complex uh, uh, set of reactions. Uh, we looked into the chemical structure of hydrogen and flame, uh, chain structure, thermal structure and then we looked into the limit phenomena, ignition, extinction, quenching distance. Uh, adiabatic thermal ignition, uh, non-adiabatic explosion uh, and then uh, well stirred reactor and its curve, okay. By explosion once again here we mean rapid combustion where the, the rapid uh, release of energy causes a quick uh, increase in temperature, okay. And then we looked into the well stirred reactor and the S curve and the different uh, like ignition extinction points at different Darm Coulomb numbers. Then we looked into the limit phenomena, we looked into premix flame extinction, how does it extinguish and the flammability limits, okay. So, with this our concepts of this uh, fundamental combustion process uh, was done and then uh, we were in a position to understand turbulent combustion because you see in an engine is a very complex turbulent flame, okay. So, but the individual unit part of a turbulent flame is essentially this fundamental combustion process that we have described. But so, once we know the fundamental combustion processes, we can use those concepts to describe something bigger, uh, something statistically to describe turbulent combustion. So, then we looked into turbulent uh, combustion where we first started with uh, non-reacting and reacting turbulent flows. Um, we looked into turbulence first uh, where we spent a lot of time uh, in analyzing the non-reacting turbulence concepts. Uh, we looked into how we can derive uh, RANS equations, uh, uh, how does the concepts of uh, turbulent kinetic energy trans, uh, tra transport equation arrive, what are the, how does production of turbulent kinetic energy happen, how does dissipation happen and then uh, once this turbulent kinetic energy is produced, how does this um, pass across uh, different scales and gets dissipated into the uh, Kolmogorov length scales, okay. So, we looked into the effect of, uh, we looked into this turbulent kinetic energy and cascade, we looked into Kolmogorov hy uh, hypothesis um, uh, and uh, we looked into the energy spectrum. We looked into the turbulence, effect of turbulence on combustion and we introduced the concept of Fabry averaging or density weighted averaging. And then we looked into this eddy viscosity k epsilon model and the uh, energy equation and reactive scalar formulations. Then we looked into the moment methods where we wanted to average, uh, arrive at averaged uh, description of this uh, governing, uh, average governing equations uh, or governing equations that describe average variables. But immediately we landed up in a closure problem and we found that the nonlinearity of the of the reaction rate um, uh, problem or uh, nonlinearity non of the reaction rate poses a major difficulty in, uh, in, in its averaging, okay. So, uh, then uh, uh, we looked into the, the, the dissipation and scalar transport, we looked into the gradient transport and the reactive scalar transport and uh, scalar dissipation rate. Uh, we looked into rud rudimentary models to provide closures where we discussed uh, like eddy breakup and eddy dissipation models, uh, uh, small length theory of EBU uh, eddy breakup concept. Mm, uh, we looked into then uh, turbulent non premixed uh, combustion. Uh, where uh, we, uh, we we showed different types of non-premixed uh, uh, turbulent flames uh, and then we introduced the concept of mixture fraction. And once the mixture fraction concept of in, in was introduced as a, as a, as a conserved scalar, we, um, we also discussed the, the average, the transport equation for Z and uh, to close them how one can use this PDF, uh, presumed shape uh, PDF approach and the Favre averaged equation. Then we, uh, because this uh, mixture fraction emerges as such an important quantity, we this, uh, said that one could even transfer or one could even uh, write 
the governing equations with mixture fraction as the independent variable. So, that led to this Kroko transformation in the z space. So, we transformed all these energy equations into mixture fraction space and that led to the emergence of the scalar dissipation rate as a characteristic diffusivity. And then we discussed the different time scales in non-premise combustion. We uh, just touched upon uh, conditional moment closure modeling and we touched upon also the regimes of non-premise combustion. So, with that uh, we went into turbulent uh, premix flames uh, where we discussed at length the concepts of regime diagrams, uh, the interpretation of the dam column number, call of its number, uh, the other uh, flame speeds and the flame stretch concepts. And we looked uh, we uh, showed the G equation and the models for flame speed in G equation and then we looked into uh, the turbulent burning velocity and the turbulent flame speed derivation. We showed the experiments of turbulent uh, uh, flame propagation rate uh, contemporary experiments and we finished it off with the Bray, Moss and Libby model. Okay. Now, this was the final part. So, we now have understanding of, uh, of the fundamental processes of combustion. We know uh, how, uh, how we can describe uh, turbulent combustion um, using this part. So, now we can go into the different uh, applied aspects of our aero engine combustors and the associated processes. Um, okay. So, um, the, the whole thing is that the combustion happens in uh, these all these engines at intensely turbulent flows. So, it is important to understand the fundamentals to even appreciate what happens in a gas turbine engine and, and to develop capabilities on how to model them. So, of course, the most one of the most important uh, engines around is the uh, gas turbine engine and we looked into the aero gas turbine combustors. Uh, so, where we looked into the, we, we introduced it, we introduced it the basic design features and how one, uh, one, how the modern gas turbine combustor essentially evolves from a straight duct, how why it needs a diffuser, why it needs um, a flame uh, swallers, all these things and then we looked into the different zones in a combustor. We looked into the different types of combustors, can, can annular, annular combustor and we looked into the flames in swirling flows. And then we looked into the different zones of the combustors, um, the primary zone, the dilution zone, uh, the, uh, the primary zone and the dilution zone mainly and uh, how those can be used uh, coupled to, uh, to uh, achieve uh, 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 desired pattern factor which uh, is very important for the life of the turbine. Okay. But of course, uh, this uh, aero gas turbine engines uh, works on the print, uh, works with liquid fuels. So, it is important to understand uh, how liquid uh, jet breaks up because so far we have understood how the droplet evaporates. So, but taking a step back now we needed to understand how the liquid jet essentially breaks up so that uh, the surface area can be increased uh, by forming small droplets and now the small droplets can evaporate and uh, mix and burn. So, for that liquid jet break up we looked into Rayleigh plateau instability the fundamentals and then we looked into different atomizers and cooling techniques. Okay. So, from for the in the following then we looked into flame stabilizations and for that we introduced after burners and we introduced after uh, inter bluff body flows and the uh, and uh, the different blow off color correlation. We discussed at length the principles and the and the uh, and the uh, and the applications of laser induced fluorescence that is we need to understand how the species field evolves inside a uh, uh, inside a real combustor. So, for that uh, one of the ideal techniques is to use the laser induced fluorescence or uh, and it is a planar counterpart on the planar laser induced fluorescence. Also, uh, we looked into particle image velocimetry, uh, uh, we looked into the different blow off stages, um, uh, we, the particle image velocimetry was used to understand the, the flow field uh, of this uh, combustion uh, inside the combustor uh, in the uh, flow field in a, in, a, in a flame which is stabilized by a bluff body. Then we looked into the different blow off stages, we looked into the blow off mechanisms and um, that emerges from the small scale laboratory experiments. And then we discussed uh, the blow off mechanism using laser diagnostics from a prototypical afterburner that was um, um, uh, uh, this experience was done at University of Connecticut. And finally, we looked into uh, this uh, uh, this uh, scramjet uh, 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 combustion in scramjet where we introduced the scramjet, we introduced a steady 1D analysis of frictionless flow with heat addition in, with, in constant cross section. Uh, we looked into different processes in our scramjets uh, like mixing and then we looked into ignition, burning time scales and flame stabilization. So, that is all uh, we have covered for this course. It is a lot of material that we have um, covered and I hope that you will find this useful and find it exciting to uh, pursue one of these or many of these topics further in your career. 
So I'll finish off with these acknowledgements. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks to my PhD advisor, Professor B. M. Serijan. Uh, I have presented many of the works that we did together at uh, University of Connecticut. Uh, to my postdoc advisor, Professor C. K. Law at Princeton University, and many of the notes uh, he generously gave, and uh, which I have taken some parts of that and have been modified them and used this in this course, of course with his permission. And then uh, uh, my colleagues at the Department of uh, Aerospace Engineering and the Institute uh, for their support. Uh, to my students, uh, acknowledgments is due, are due uh, to my students Ankit, Abhijit, Arunab, Nimesh, Raju and Lakshmi for their inputs. And of course, uh, my PhD students Harsh and Himanshu has been instrumental in realizing the, in this course and making many of the slides, uh, uh, editing them, modifying them as well as preparing them as well as with the assignments and the question papers. Their help is um, uh, acknowledged. And uh, to many papers and the books that have been used, uh, new, we have used numerous uh, materials from numerous papers and books um, uh, with citations of course. If there are any omission, uh, apologies for that. And to the great wonderful and uh, NPTEL staff, uh, Ms. Vidya, Ms. Guru Raja, Mr. Guru Prakash and Mr. Avinash who have patiently done, uh, worked with me throughout this course. Uh, to IIT Madras for coordinating this great initiative, uh, to ISC for coordinating this great initiative and uh, uh, of course uh, acknowledgements are due to you, uh, to the students only whose learning can make this course a success and finally uh, mm, uh, uh, acknowledgements to my family uh, for their patience. So thank you very much, hope you enjoyed this course. <laughs>